and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff, and I hope you guys all had a very good holiday week or two weeks or however long that you had off, even if it was just Christmas, I hope it was splendid. If you have a question, feel free to leave them down below in the comments or go on over to my Ask FM account thing and uh, maybe we'll get you sorted out with uh, some answers. First question, what was the best thing that you got for Christmas? Actually, the best thing I got for Christmas was this awesome, I don't know if you can see that, Simpsons wallet. And uh, it was from my daughter, Ashley. And I like these paper wallets, they're called Mighty Wallets. And they're made of plastic impregnated paper and they're light and they're extremely durable. I mean, one of these lasts a really long time. You can put them in the washer. I mean, they're, they're really tear proof and they're awesome. And I've had them for many, many years and she decided I needed a new one to replace my my old Star Wars 70s comic wallet. So she got me the Simpsons one and I absolutely love it. Leave a comment below. Uh, tell me the coolest thing that you got for Christmas. I've been singing for a few years now and wanted to make videos for YouTube covers without going to an expensive studio. I don't mind the video quality, but need help on finding a good mic and software for under $300. Well, good for you for deciding to want to actually make the step and start posting videos on YouTube. It can be a daunting thing, so congrats on that. Uh, as far as gear and a DAW for a total of under $300, I would re recommend uh, Reaper, Kukos Reaper. Um, that's about $60, $80 last time I checked, and that is a full feature DAW. It's a great DAW. Lots of people use it, and you can get it on the cheap directly from uh, the manufacturer or the, the software company in this case. Um, as far as microphones go, you have a ton of options. If you want to stay on the cheap, I've actually been using this MXL VL50 mic. Um, I don't normally like MXL stuff. I got this on a deal of the day for 50 bucks. Normally it's $100, I believe, for Musician's Friend. It sounds phenomenal and, and it's a condenser mic which gives you a lot of detail, which would be perfect for vocal covers. I mean, I use it all the time for spoken word stuff, Skype sessions. Um, I've used it for instrument stuff and backup vocal stuff. I've used it all over the place here and there, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful mic, and it sounds really, really good. You will need phantom power, however, so make sure the interface that you were using has phantom power. I mean, most of them do anyways, but uh, that's what I would recommend for something on the cheap, I and mean, you could go traditional old school and also get a dynamic mic and something like an SM50 or SM58 something like that for super, super cheap. But uh, for vocal covers and stuff like that, I would definitely go for the sensitivity of a condenser and uh, start with the MXL, but um, don't hesitate to call like a Sweetwater rep as well. And they can help steer you, steer you in the direction of something more suited towards your actual voice as well. What is it about Balaguer guitars that you like so much to collaborate with them to make the Hyperion? Um, it was a few things. Uh, Joe is a super, super cool guy and he kind of got it or does get it about the aesthetic of the RD because up until that time I was primarily known for playing Gibsons and uh, the my old Gibson RDs, which I loved to death, but they were kind of unreliable in the sense that uh, I couldn't ever rely upon them to stay in tune for more than five minutes. And if I was in the studio and I would stop to play or edit something, the neck would kind of cool down from my hand not being on it and it would kind of universally change pitch upward. Um, live, when the stage gets really hot or you're under hot lights, the tuning would just be all over the place. And it was always a really difficult task to keep it in tune. But otherwise, I loved the guitars. So we had the Sleep City Tour, my old band had the Sleep City Tour coming up. And I didn't want to take the old Gibsons out on the road. And I had told them this and he said, well, I'm going to design something kind of like your RD, you should help me kind of design it. And that was originally just the intent. I was just gonna add some, um, I don't know, I was just kinda gonna add some advice and answer some of his questions uh, if he asked me. And then that kind of grew into, you just wanna make it your signature model and you can pip it all the time. And I was like, yeah, sure, cause I don't wanna take these old Gibsons on the road. Also, Joe never ever told me no on anything. Like everything I wanted, no matter you know, any any finishes, stainless steel frets, lumen lace side markers, like um, I had talked to a few companies in the past and I was always told, well, you know, that's too expensive or it's always money, money, money. It was always about money. And Joe, he would never ever tell me no. He would just come back with a different option or we would go with the option that I wanted. So I think that really spoke volumes for me. But uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out Balaguer Guitars, um, 
definitely, definitely do so. I get asked all the time, like, what is that guitar you're playing? Um, they're just awesome guitars. My buddy Bo from Salesin has a signature guitar as well. And um, let's see, the guy from The Word Alive has a signature guitar. And uh, Joe is just an awesome guy and he builds awesome, awesome guitars. Thoughts on the new LTD Sparrowhawk from Bill Kelleher? Yeah, I think it looks awesome. I think it looks like a 60s reverse Firebird for all intents and purposes. I mean, it looks like a, a Firebird with a different headstock, which I actually like the three, the three and three headstock more than the six in line. And I like that he has uh, both of his signature models in like the, the satin green burst, whatever you want to call it. I, I don't know what the official name is, but uh, looks super, super cool. I hope to try one in Nam. Uh, I'll be in Nam in just a few weeks, so I will definitely be stopping by the uh, ESP booth to uh, check it out. And now, the dad joke of the week. Why are zombies never lonely? They can always dig up a few friends. My suggestion to you this week is to check out this awesome video of producer Eric Valentine going over how he got some of the guitar sounds for one of my favorite records of all time, Songs for the Deaf by Queens of the Stone Age. Um, he goes over kind of the thought process and kind of some of the microphones going into some of the uh, guitar tones. There's lots of lots of mid-range, spoiler alert. And um, I thought it was just super, super cool because there's not a lot known as far as the exact gear uh, that was used for that record because the Queens are famously kind of protective about their guitar tones and things like that. So it's really, really cool to get kind of a sneak peek behind the curtain as it were. You've been wonderful, I have been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.